The United States has a long and proud history of providing refuge in the world's most, to the world's most vulnerable. That history includes my father-in-law, Israel Goldfarb. He and his family came from Russia. They were refugees escaping the pogroms of the Tsar. I've been disgusted, Mr. President, in recent days to see some of my Republican colleagues shun the American tradition of displaying compassion for those in need, of sheltering those fleeing death, torture, rape, and oppression. Frankly, I've been disappointed by Republican fear-mongering and bigotry. Apparently, they've learned nothing from history. We cannot repeat the dark days of the 1930s when many Americans resolved to turn away the helpless refugees fleeing Nazi Germany. Adolf Hitler, or our imprisoning of innocent Japanese Americans during World War II, like our late colleague Dan Inouye and his family. Those mistakes were based on misguided fears of people we didn't know. And how many people died because of unfounded apprehension? I don't know, but far too many. Yet it seems many Republicans are destined to go down that same path again. Some in the Republican Party have suggested that we categorically block all Syrian refugees. One Republican candidate for president suggests we turn away even five-year-old refugee children. Two other Republican candidates for president implied that the United States of America should have some sort of religious test for refugees. They're saying only Christians. <clears throat> this is the latest in what has become a disturbing pattern of Republican hatred and tolerance toward Muslims. Remember, Syria is mostly Muslim, but they're Jews, they're Christians, lots of them. During the course of the current presidential cycle, we've heard from the leading lights of the Republican Party the following, that we're at war with Islam, that we should be shutting down Muslim houses of worship in America, close the mosques, that we should ban Muslims from government service, we have two of my friends who serve in the House of Representatives who are Muslim. They're proud. That religion has made them better people. And now that we, they're even suggesting we should reject refugees fleeing persecution on the grounds they're Muslim. That's not America. That is hate emanating from some Republicans. That anti-Muslim venom from Republicans is a propaganda bonanza for ISIS. And Christian groups have responded to those Republican attacks. To enter the U.S. refugee program as an applicant, the U.N. Refugee Agency must first select and refer all potential refugees to our program. We accept refugees solely on a referral basis from a United Nations agency. We don't go out soliciting these people. After being referred, all refugees, including those from Syria, are subjected to extremely rigorous screening and security checks. This isn't some easy procedure where refugees fly right through the application process and are sent here within a matter of days. No, it takes an average of 18 to 24 months for a refugee to make it through the process to come to the United States. Remember, the vast majority of these people that are checked and rechecked, taking 24 months, are women and children and old men. I repeat, it takes 18 to 24 months for a refugee to make it through the process of coming to the United States. That's why only 1,800 refugees have been admitted since the start of the conflict out of the millions who are fleeing Syria. Our government accepts only the most vulnerable of the Syrians, survivors of violence and torture, those with severe medical conditions, women and children. But security precautions are not taking a back seat in the process. These Syrian refugees are real people. The images of their plight should be so visually apparent in our minds. Think of that little boy that we saw and everyone saw around the world. A picture of this little dead boy washed up on a beach, a drowned Syrian boy whose body was washed up on this Turkish beach. Pictures on the front page of newspapers, all the TV programs for several days. At that time, Democrats and Republicans together responded with calls for compassion and action. I urge Republicans to remember that little boy. We must help where we can. That's who we are. We're America. 
We come to the defense of the defenseless. We come to the aid of those in need. And right now, we are needed.